My name is Sherry. I'm one of the therapists for Endeavor Testing. Um, this is also another therapist from Endeavor, Dwayne Flack. So um, how we're going to start out today is just kind of giving you an overview of what you're going to be getting um, via mail. Um, and then after that, if you have any further questions, you can give us a call um, and we will check in on you. So uh, without further ado, let's begin. So here is the box that you will be receiving. And open it up. Um, on the top is going to be a folder. Inside this folder is going to be um, your manual for the machine, manual for the humidifier, and then this is actually kind of nice. This is a quick reference. It'll make more sense after we're done here. But it's a quick reference to look at some of the uh, more important um, points um, on how to use the machine so you don't have to look through your whole manual. Um, and also in this um, folder is going to be a little bit about um, sleep apnea, which you've been diagnosed with. Um, you can look through here. And also you're going to be able to be hooked up with Dream Napper, which we will get into later. Um, so how we're kind of going to begin everything is we're going to go through um, first um, your mask fitting. Um, after that, we're going to go through the operation of the machine. And after that, we will go through cleaning of all of your supplies. Um, which in here also, there's going to be a cleaning sheet for you to follow. Everything I say is pretty much going to be on this sheet. And also in here is going to be a sheet for that software, the Dream Mapper, which um, I will get into later on. That will be our last item that we will cover. Um, and um, there is also a card attached here. Um, this is going to be me. Um, and our phone number is going to be on here. Um, so you can give us a call with any other issues. Um, we are also sending an email over to you with some instructional videos as well to help you. So let's get started. So um, you're going to be pulling out of your box. We do have set um, the machine already, whatever the doctor's prescription is. Your machine is going to be set and ready to go. Here is the mask that we are going to take care of first. So, but I do want you to take your machine out. Um, this is the machine, this is the humidifier portion, which we're going to get into, but I just want you to take the machine out because when we fit you with your mask, I want you to put it on with the machine so that you can see how it actually um, feels to make sure that you don't have any leaks. So that's why I'm going to actually have you take the machine out and get it all plugged in. So um, this is green, this is green. So we have color coded. There is nowhere else on this machine that it can be plugged into, but just so that you know, green with green. It does come in two pieces, just like your computer does um, at home. Um, we have to have that transformer on there. Um, it'd be nice if we had a little bit smaller, but that's the way it is, I guess. So it kind of looks like your computer. Um, you do have your tubing in here. This is a 15 millimeter tube. This is what is going to attach to the humidifier and also to your mask. So it is going to go right into here. Both sides are the same uh, millimeter. So um, if they're both sides are 15 millimeter, it doesn't matter which side that you put into the mask or into the humidifier. They are both the same size. Now you're going to open up your uh, mask. We are sending you um, what is considered a nasal mask. Um, this is for people who breathe through their nose, um, but what we have found is even people who are mouth breathers with the pressure that it sometimes um, has the mouth stay shut. So we're going to start out with this. 
Um, if um, it is a problem that you feel that you're still snoring, that your spouse is still complaining of that, if we see that on the data, um, we can always switch out this mask. But we will begin here and then go from there. So on the top, there's a little instructional manual. You can just go ahead and take that off. Now, the one part that I do want at the beginning to show you is that here is your sizing. Small, medium, medium, wide, and large. You're just going to take this and put it up to the bottom of your nose. And when I do that, it does come out to the medium wide. So that is what I'm going to um, put on, um, fit him with today. So that's all you need to do. Pretty much go into your bathroom, into uh, wherever there's a mirror, and you know you can do it yourself. You'll be able to see it in the mirror. Just put your nose up, and you'll be able to see where that should be fit, or if your spouse or somebody can take a look at that. Um, also on this instruction um, packet is um, how to put it on. It actually goes step by step on what needs to be done. So keep that handy. What I usually do is put that into your folder so that you can keep all of your instructions in one spot. And then it's easy to go ahead and refer to. There is also an instruction manual um, for your mask um, that is included as well. So, here is what, where we'll have to change it out. It comes with the small cushion attached. So, we have to change it over to that medium wide. So, you're going to look in the packet for whatever size you need. It will always be documented on that packet. Here's our medium wide, the large, and the medium. So, you always have these available. Sometimes you might fit yourself with a size, then you get it put onto your face, you lay down, and maybe that's not the correct size. So you always want to have, keep those um, in case that size needs to be changed out. So we'll go ahead and grab our medium wide here. So, um, it's very nice with this mask that it has the arrows. The size is going to go arrow to arrow. So this pulls off very easily and snaps back on. <clears throat> so, when you're getting ready now to put this mask on, which the markers that you always want to look for is this is what you should be seeing. That Philips Respronics is upright. If it's upside down, it's you're putting it on the wrong way. So always when you're looking at it, you see the writing is upright. The other marker you're going to see is the headgear. The headgear is also sized. Almost everyone um, will be a medium headgear. If there does, if there is a problem with that, we can always send out a different size for that. And with Respronics, the size of the cushion will always be on the left side, always on your left side. So then we can go ahead and fit this. Like I said, go into you know, go wherever there's a mirror. Look at your markers. Yes, it's upright. Yes, I can see the medium. Yes, I have the size on the left. So you know you're putting it on correctly. So this is going to go underneath the nose. There's a hole here. It's a continual hole. That needs to go underneath the nose. We take it, and you want to take the other hand and pull to the back. This is correct, it's on the top. This is a very nice feature because the tubing is going to get hooked up to here. Which, when you're laying down, and we'll show you, we'll go over to the recliner later, 
When you're laying down now, this will be behind you and it allows that 360 motion. So go ahead and turn around, do whatever you want to do there because this is going to follow you. Now, if you could just turn around. Um, I would like to show you this because when you decide to fit, to tighten this, um, these two Velcros, this is exactly where you want it to be, a little bit further down on the head. Um, people have a tendency to want to have this up here. Fit it for here. Have this down here. Go ahead and turn around. Um, ladies, um, on that back, we can also, if, um, if you feel like this is riding up, you can always take your hair, put it in a pony, put it through here. You can take out that rubber band, but then that gives it a little bit more stability um, also to stay in place. So now we're ready. And we can then tighten. Um, couple tips with any mask that you have. When you put this mask on, you're putting it from forward to back. When you take it off, you're going to take it off from back to forward. Um, the reasoning for that is so that we don't tear that hole um, that's in the middle. That can sometimes happen. So the other tip is that when you tighten or loosen this Velcro, you want to do it together. Please do not go this, then this. Because the reasoning for that is that it will never end up midline on your face. And that's what's going to create the leakage. So you want to take the two together. Now you don't need to pull it so tight. Um, put it to where it's comfortable. And then you'll know, um, once you turn the machine on, you're going to know then if you need to tighten up or not, if this is the right size. Another tip that I'd like to give you as well with any mask, wash your face before you go to bed at night. The oils from the day can make this mask move around. And it's not going to adhere then, the mask won't adhere to your face. Wash your face before you go to bed at night. Um, and then when you get up, I'm going to go through with cleaning, is to clean off that cushion um, part underneath here. Um, and on the side if you don't use the side bands. So now you're ready um, and you can go ahead and turn on the machine. So there is a bar here. This is where the machine gets turned on. This is a ramp button. Um, nine times out of ten we're not going to have that ramp button set. Um, if you are on an auto machine, uh, you are set at the lowest pressure of five. Um, so we really don't need to have a ramp set up. Um, if you're on a straight pressure, then we will set it. But nine times out of ten, we will not have to set that. So you're just going to go ahead, hit the button. It looks like this when you begin. Hit the button, turn it on, and here is your uh, beginning pressure of five. If that's what you're set at. Now, if you accidentally hit this ramp button, it's okay. It, if it's not set, it won't do anything. It will just circle in yellow and nothing will happen. But I do want to tell people that because they do worry if they hit a button and then they're thinking that they uh, maybe messed something up with the machine. So no problem there. If you hit it, no problem at all. And if you are set at a ramp, we will talk about that um, when we um, speak with you, that you can hit that to help you allow um, the pressure to be a little bit lower and gradually go higher. So now, once you have everything turned on and you have your mask on, um, now you'll know if there's any leakage. Now, it's normal to feel air coming out here. You can take your hand, go like this. That is normal. Up here, take your hand. Um, this is an exhalation port. Air is supposed to come out here. 
So don't worry about that. I do get a lot of calls. Oh, there's air coming out here. That's okay. No problem. Where you don't want to feel the air coming is into your eyes or just take your finger and go around the nose and feel to see if there's any leak. If there isn't, you're good to go. Remember, there is some air coming out here, but just take your finger under here and see if there's any leakage. If there's not, you're good. And usually you will hear a sound of a leak. So if there's a leak, you're going to hear it. If not, this is how quiet it actually is. So as long as I have the machine on, I can show you quickly. After about two minutes, your screen is going to go to black. Um, that's good. We want to keep you sleeping. We don't want that light shining in your face to keep you awake. So this will turn off after about two minutes. Um, if you want to see your screen, just go ahead, hit the front dial, click it, and it will come back on. That way you are able to see your pressure, where you're at, and this will change. Don't be alarmed if when you start out at 5 and you wake up in the middle of the night, this may say 10. That is what the machine is supposed to do. If you are set on an auto between 5 and 15, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to go between 5 and 15. So don't be alarmed when you see this at a different pressure. This down here is your humidifier, and that's where I'm going to take you through at this point. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and we are going to turn off the machine, and we're going to go through the operation of the machine. Again, remember, when you turn off, uh, when you take off this mask, back to front. When you put it on, front to back. Now, you can also, inside here, um, I do want to mention there are, um, you can put these on the side if you want to. What I've been hearing from patients is that pretty much um, this is very comfortable. But if you're in a state that's warm, um, humid, you may want to put these on. It's a matter of just, again, a Velcro, and they can be slipped onto the side. You want to keep the Velcro to the outside so that you do have that nice, soft, no lump in by your face. So these can be put on or not. It is a purely a comfort feature. There's a lot of things that are just really purely comfort. Um, that go along with this machine, which is nice and interactive. So we're going to put that aside for now. And we're going to go through the operation of the machine. So again, plugging in the machine, green to green plugging it in. This machine can be um, broken in two. As I told you, there is the machine and the humidifier portion of this. There is a button right here that can be pressed and pulled apart. Why would you do this? Um, if you don't feel like you need the humidity um, when you have the machine on, but most people, um, one of the um, side effects of obstructive sleep apnea is dryness. So this humidifier really helps with that dryness. Um, and it's a cool. Um, so it does feel good um, when you are using it. But if you would want to, you could. So this will hook up right to here and then the machine will work all on its own it does not need this this is a comfort feature so you could use it so so again push together and sometimes in the beginning this will be a little tight 
So you can always press this in. So, a um, couple things on this machine. On this side, there is a modem. This modem is going to allow us to see your data and for you to see your data on the Dream um, Mapper software. Um, there isn't anything really that you have to do that just stays closed. It will do its job. Um, the only considerations you need to make with having a modem is that um, I don't want you to put your cell phone here, atomic clock, tablet, nothing here because it will block the signal. Um, Respiratic says that um, it will call out to the machine one hour after you turn it off. Um, does that happen? We don't know. So that's why we don't want anything sitting here uh, because um, we want that to be able to hook up to the machine. This is going through the cell towers. You do not have to hook up to Wi-Fi. Um, you're all set to go. It's going to work just like your cell phone or um, anything else that's using the cell towers. And the other consideration is that you need to keep the machine plugged in 24-7. Not turned on, just plugged in. So that when um, it does call out to the machine, it's able to pick up uh, all of the information with the machine turned on. On this side are your filters. As with any compressor, humidifier, there are filters. We have to protect this machine and have an exchange um, of inlet. So um, these are your filters. This is in two. This is considered your permanent filter. This one is going to be washed. Um, what the manufacturer would like you to do, they do not want you to set this in um, water for a long period of time. So their suggestion is that you take it, put it under the faucet, and take your finger and kind of get the debris off. Shake it, get the excess water, and let it dry with the rest of your supplies. And we will hit on the rest of your supply cleaning. This filter is never to get wet. Don't put this, of course, into the machine a wet. Um, this is your disposable filter. This one um, gets changed when it's dirty. So when you take this out once a week to clean it, you will look at this one when it gets blackish in color, throw it out, and you'll be calling here for new supplies. And I can't tell you how long it's going to be before this needs to get replaced out. That's always a question. It depends on if you have a pet in the home, if there's a smoker in the home. Um, there's many factors that can go into this. Um, so um, just check it. When it gets blackish in color, throw it out and we'll replace it. So when it snaps together, there is a ridge in here. So it's going to go long end to long end short end to short end. Even if you tried to do it the wrong way, it will not let you. So just snap it in. And then the piece that has these little plastic pieces out, that is going to be to the outside. And it will just slip in. There is an SD card in here. Um, we really probably will never have to use that. It is in there. Leave it in there. Um, the machine is what's holding your information. So if something even would happen to that SD card or to the modem, we could always put another SD card in and retrieve your information. So just leave that closed. All right. So now we're going to hook this up. Turn this on the side for right now. This is your humidifier. It is spring loaded. There is a bar here. Take this, press it towards you, and lift. There is a water chamber in here which comes out. Please take that out. I know it's tempting with this nice big area that you could 
glug, glug, glug your water. But we want this to be taken out. There is a fill line here. Um, and I know it's very light. So I do tell patients that if they would like, they could um, take a black Sharpie and just make a line so it's easier to see. Um, so I do like you to see, I don't know if it's going to be easy. So why we don't want that um, you putting water in with the chamber in here is we are directly hooked up to the electrical component. Um, so if you would be pouring that water in, it could splash and get into the electrical component. It could be pretty hard to do that, but we do not want to take that chance. So no water when um, it's inside the chamber. Um, and I do like to show you this little gasket here. I want you to be aware that it is here. Because what happens sometimes is when people put the water chamber in, they bring it this way and the gasket has come off, rolled underneath, and then um, you don't even know that there was a gasket that has to be there. So I do want to point out that gasket. It's easy, you know, you could um, get that off, but it's very easy to put back on. So for that reason, when you put the water chamber in, there's hole here, hole to there. You always want to put it in to the back. It fits in the cradle. It will come forward. So you don't have to worry about that. So if you can, try and put this towards the back, into the cradle, and then shut it. So now controlling your humidifier, again, we're going to turn on the machine. Here is your pressure. Here is your humidifier setting. When the machine is turned on, this dial will control your humidity. It goes from zero up to five. The higher you go, the more humidity. Again, this is a comfort feature for you, which is nice. Whatever is good for you is what is the right answer. So we are going to start you off at 2. How, will, how you will know to change that out is that if you put this on in the night and you are feel dry, then up it by 1, always in increments of 1. If you um, feel like that's a little bit too much humidity for you, you're going to bring it down in, in increments of one. I do have patients that actually um, are on zero, but they do keep the water in. It acts as a bypass, and that's enough for them. Um, always distilled water into your water chamber. Um, if you are on vacation or you are at a place that you cannot get distilled water, then go ahead with your bottled water. Um, never, never tap water. Tap water, you don't know the quality of the water, and also um, the mineral deposits from that water um, can wreck your chamber quickly. So for the longevity of your supplies, you want to either use exclusively the distilled water but of course if you're on vacation or something almost everywhere has bottled water so go ahead and use the bottled water when you get home um, definitely you can go ahead and go back to your distilled water so in review machine on this dial is going to control your humidity um, when you get to the point where you want to be at um, it will um, go back down into that smaller font. When you turn it, it goes up to that bigger font. And then, then it w once you have it set, it will go back down. There is a little um, humidifier here. It's showing you that the um, these little lines here for the heater, showing you that the heater is working. But remember, the heater is working for humidity, not for heat. Of course, with humidity, you might get a little bit, a um, little, little warm, but um, it is heating for humidity and not for heat. 
we would use a heated tube. That's what these little holes here are for, is that we would hook in a heated tube. But most people do not need that heated tube. Um, the humidifier um, is perfectly fine. Um, your humidifier can also be set um, in an adaptive mode or a fixed mode. And I'm going to show you in here how you could change it out if you would like. We are sending it to you in an adaptive mode, meaning that it takes in the room air, picks up the water that it needs, to give you what you have put into the humidifier setting. So what that means is if you are in a warm climate, um, it's, there's a lot of humidity, you may not see that water coming down. Um, so don't be alarmed if you don't see your water coming down. If it's humid, it doesn't need to pick up all of that water to give you. Um, when it gets cooler, you'll see that water coming down. All right, so now um, we can go through the operation of the machine. So when the machine is off, this dial is now going to control going into your apps or menus. This preheat, um, you're usually not going to use. This heats up well enough um, quickly that you really don't need to use it. We keep it off. Um, and I can show you too that there is a heating plate. This does get warm. And here's the heater. So in the morning you don't want to go sticking your fingers into there because it is, it is warm. It does get warm. So preheat, you're really not going to do um, much with that. Um, first one is my provider. In order to get into any of these menus, then you will click on. And now you are into that menu. First one is um, tells you your serial number in that this is an auto CPAP machine. The next one um, is upload. This is if we were watching you and speaking with you regarding how you're feeling. If the, if the machine is not doing its job in correcting uh, your obstructions on the pressure that it's on, we can go ahead and change your pressure on your machine with ever, you, ever being here. That is the beauty of the modem. So we would have you come here and uh, we would walk you through, but it would be a matter of pressing this in. It would say sending, sending, sending. I do not have this machine at this time hooked up to a patient, um, so it will say uh, failed on here, but what it would say is complete. And um, once it's complete, uh, then your machine would be changed. See how it's saying failed because I am not associated this with a patient yet. But for you, it would say complete. Then we would know that the machine has been changed. We'd click to close out and then scroll. The last one in this um, menu is performance. This is a very nice feature that was added to this um, new machine. Um, by the way, this machine came out in 2015 and we've had um, fantastic response from this machine. So this was one of the added features and it's called performance. Um, this can run a diagnostics. So if you are on vacation, you drop your machine and you're wondering, did I break this machine? You can come in here, press in here, and it will run a diagnostics and tell you if there's anything wrong with the machine. So it's a very nice feature. Um, main menu. After every um, app, each one having its own, you will come to the end of it. It will say main menu, click, and it will take you back to where you were. Next one, my setup. Press it in. This is saying, you will see that it says a ramp. You do not have a ramp. We are not able to get rid of that, but you can see here this is on zero. So you do not have a ramp. If we ever need to change it, it's nice that the feature is there that we can um, add that. 
Flex is a setting that is a comfort feature as well, which you can change out. Um, and this would be ch changed out. The only time this would be changed out is if you are ever saying to yourself, it's kind of hard to breathe out, um, then this can be changed. Three is the highest um, expiratory pressure relief. Um, and amazingly with um, men I'm finding is that I really don't give them the three, the most relief. It's a dip in pressure and most men it does not feel good to them to have it as the most. So I will usually set that on two. But you will be able to change this out if you need. We, will, we can talk about that as well. This is that humidifier um, where I was saying that it can be set at an adaptive press the button in, or fixed. When it's in that whitish in color, you can change it. When you tap it, it is setting. Um, adaptive, again, means that it's pulling in the room air, um, picking up what it needs to give you what you have set. When it is in the fixed mode, um, it's not taking in the room air. So um, people who are in a more humid um, state um, may decide to go um, with the fixed um, so that their water doesn't come down as much. Um, and that's definitely something we can talk about. This is another comfort feature, what is good for you. But it will be coming set at the adaptive. Mass type. This is something that is on all Respironics um, packaging. Um, it has a times one which can be set. This is also can be um, a comfort feature. Um, we usually at this point when we send out the machines we have this on off. Um, sometimes there's a resistance so we can talk about that as well if we would ever change that out. This is your tube type. It's a 15 millimeter, 15 millimeter. Again, both ends are the same circumference. Um, you can change this um, from English to Spanish. So whatever you would like to do, you are, do have that option. Check mask fit. Um, this feature is very nice for people who are just starting out with the machine. Um, you can... And it, it always will tell you what to do. So you're going to put your mask on, get it situated, and then you'll go in here, click to check. It's going to run for 40 seconds. I'm going to simulate you being on this machine and using it. It will give you at the end of 40 seconds a green check mark to go, red check mark no. You need to check then your mask uh, because you have a little bit more of a leak. So um, this is a very nice feature. Um, usually you can tell if you have a mask as we simulated that you would hear that sound, you would feel that. Um, but now you're going to go ahead and there's your check mark. So then it will tell you, click to close click and you are back and ready to go. So back into the rest of your setup. Um, the last one is showing your modem. It's saying it's on. It has the bars saying you're good. Um, it is the Bluetooth is on to enable you to um, put your Dream Mapper onto your um, smartphone. And so you are able to see your information in three places. You can go to your computer, you can um, have your information on your cell phone, and on the machine. This is the time. Um, this will change out for daylight savings time if that is um, in your state. 
Um, when you move from state to state, it should change um, the time as well. So again, back to main menu. And now your info. This is a very informative for you to go in and look at. It will always be in this format, one day, seven day, 30 day. So the first one is therapy hours. Um, so when you use this machine the, um, in the morning, it will come up and it will tell you last night how many hours you were on the machine. You, we are looking for that you are on this machine at least four or more hours a night, 70% of the time. That formula has been looked at from a long time ago. Um, it was studied to see what the best benefit from this machine is. So they came up with that number, the insurance companies, that and doctors, that you should be on the machine four or more hours, 70% of the time, to get the most benefit from this machine. Now, of course, that does not mean I want you to be only on this five out of seven days. I want you to use it every day, but that is like the beginning criteria. AHI. This is your apnea hypopnea index. This is how you got on this machine. Your number of obstructions. Therapeutically, we would like to see this number five or under. If it isn't, initially, um, you don't have to worry. Uh, we are um, going to fix that. Um, you may have a leak. Sometimes this um, number uh, will be, could be skewed if you have a large leak. So um, we'll be able to know that, um, but that is where we would like to see that number, under five, five or under. So again, the one day, seven day, and 30 day. Your next one is your mask fit. Um, this is going to tell you if your mask is um, on correctly. 100% means no leak at all. Um, you don't have to be at 100% all of the time. Um, if we would like anywhere between 90 and 100% is satisfactory. Um, so just take a look at that. We don't want to see it at 50%, then we know we have a, a problem. Periodic breathing, um, this is something more associated with a central event. Um, we don't suspect to see um, this. If we do, then um, there would be something else that we would suggest to be done. Um, don't worry if at some point you see a 1% or a 2%. Um, sometimes this can happen after you go out and have a few too many to drink at night. <laughs> so, um, or if you take an Ambien or some type of a sleep aid. So don't get nervous if you see this um, sometimes at a 1%. 90% pressure. This is going to tell you... Um, uh, because you're on an auto machine, um, it, it's just an informative thing. You may never look at this, um, but what this is telling you is 90% of the time, what was the pressure needed to keep your airway open? So because if you are, for an example, at an auto of 5 to 15, um, maybe this will say 8. And that means... I. Um, eight centimeters of water pressure was needed 90% of the time to open up your airway. This is just the Dream Mapper saying that this machine is equipped for the um, Dream Mapper software. And we are back to main menu and we are back to the beginning. So that is pretty much the operation of the machine. So we are going to go over and now we are going to put um, the mask on laying down. Because um, sometimes it can be different with laying down and sitting up. Um, sometimes we have patients that come in and I can fit them and I can, everything looks great sitting up, but maybe not laying down. So what you want to do is 
um, get your mask on, um, actually what you can do is um, go ahead and pull this apart, put your mask on, and then come back into bed, especially in the beginning. It's hard, you know, you might want to need, you do need the mirror, you know, possibly. Um, that is another thing I wanted to show you as well. This has a quick release, which most masks do. If you pull this, this white piece can come off. The only reason that I'm showing you this is because when you clean these supplies, you might not realize that this white is on here. And then people do go to try and put this into the humidifier. So just be aware that this piece does come off. It's okay. It's supposed to. Um, but it is something to be aware of. So, okay. Now, again, we're going front to back. We're going to push that down. And we're going to turn it on. And Dwayne looks very comfortable here, and I'm hoping you are too.